Wynn Schoenemann, and uh, Alani Glenn. Uh, and of course, we have our district governor uh, elect, uh, Naomi uh, Masuno, on, and uh, our district governor nominee, Sandy uh, Matsui. Uh, and, and I am the District 5000 District Governor nominee designate. Um, but, and, and again, uh, welcome. Uh, you know, it, it's a real pleasure. I, I don't want to take any time away from uh, uh, the, uh, our uh, president, Road International President uh, Mark's uh, uh, talk today. So uh, what I want to do is shift gears real quickly and let uh, Kimo our first thank Kimo Jim Becker for uh, arranging for uh, for Mark to, uh, to come online and, and talk to us today. Uh, so, without further ado, would uh, would ask uh, Kimo Jim to uh, introduce uh, uh, RI President Mark and uh, uh, let uh, President Mark uh, take it from there. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate it. it's an honor to introduce uh, uh, President Mark Maloney. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark and I connected last summer when we had a fundraiser in Oahu. Uh, it was art and wine. Uh, and, uh, and then I invited him to uh, come to our uh, global telemedicine project in Nepal. And Mark, I'm just reminding you that that was this week you would been, have, have been in Nepal. But um, let me give you a little bio on, on uh, our president, Mark Maloney. Um, a Rotarian since 1980, 40 years. He's gone through the ranks. He's uh, past, past district governor, vice president of the Rotary Foundation, uh, of course, Rotary director, um, and now president. Uh, he also uh, was uh, the chair of the Sydney Convention, so he knows a lot about conventions. But something very special I picked up is that uh, he was vice chair of Future Vision which does the global grants, which I'm very passionate about. Um, he's past president of the Rotary Club of Decatur, Alabama. I believe his wife, First Lady Gay, is as well. But I want to tell you a little something I found out. Um, last week, the plans were that he was going to travel to Germany and visit uh, several districts of Rotarians. And then from there, he was invited over uh, to be a guest of Pope Francis in the Vatican in Rome, Italy. And from there, he was coming over to Nepal uh, to be hosted by our Global Telemedicine Project and, of course, the Nepalese uh, Great Rotarians. And from there, he was going to Hong Kong to meet with several districts. Hong Kong's huge in Rotary. And then from there, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to make you cry, Mark. And from there, he was down to Malaysia and uh, that right towards the, uh, that would be this next weekend. And then, of course, over to Honolulu to kick off uh, the Rotary Convention. So, um, you know, we're all sympathetic to that, but all of our lives are changed. Uh, so with that, let's give a very warm District 5000 and East Rotary aloha welcome to our president, Mark Maloney. Aloha, Mark. Aloha. 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 Thank you very much. Kimo Jim, thank you so much. Um, most of what he said was right. He kind of conflated <laughs> two different trips. But uh, anyway, first thing, Gay and I are not in the same Rotary Club. There is no, my, Gay tells me there is no Rotary Club in the world big enough for both of us. So I belong to the old fogey Rotary Club of Decatur that's been in existence for 91 years. Gay belongs to the Rotary Club of Decatur Daybreak that meets for breakfast and has been around since 1996 for 24 years. They're coming up on their 25th anniversary in less than a year, March of 2021. And so we're gonna have to do something exciting for that. I am delighted to be with all my good friends from Hawaii. I can't tell you, I mean, I can start crying when I think about not being in Honolulu starting this Sunday in preparation for the Rotary International Convention. But I just have to remember 
that, you know, Mark Maloney wasn't picked on about this. Rotary International wasn't picked on about this. It's, we're all in this together. The entire world is in this together. And I just, um, you know, we, we've just got to face it. And that's, that's the way life is. I want, I'm going, if I'm going to try to do this with Zig. I'm going to take the webcam off the top of my um, laptop. And I'm going to show you that I am in the stage set for the virtual convention. This is, as you can tell, our a library in our law office in Decatur, Alabama. But as you see, there is the backdrop for the recording that Gay and I will be doing here. And this afternoon, I had a technical walkthrough rehearsal. And the only problem about doing this remotely was that the, um, you know, I've got all sorts of technical people and they are telling me, well, we will do this and we will do that. And I looked at them through the camera and I said, we will do this. So I climbed up on the ladder and I got those lights on top of the, the, uh, the backdrop. We've got a big ring light here. There's a tripod where the camera will go that I do not dare touch because it is now in the right location. And so tomorrow is when I record my parts for the convention, for the virtual convention. Wait a minute, there's Gay and I with Lane Kahama, wow. Anyway, um, I do hope that you will participate in the virtual convention. It's not Honolulu. Nothing could replace Honolulu, but we are going to make note of Honolulu. We are going to have Hawaiian features at this convention, and I really hope that you will join us for this virtual convention. I just frankly left. We have a weekly check-in meeting, and it just ended. In fact, I left just, they were still covering a couple things I left to come join you to be on time with y'all. And this is going to be the most exciting online event I've ever participated in. I mean, with, with the technical things that they've got planned, the virtual house of friendship, we've got 15 breakout sessions with full interpretation in all of the official rotary languages. And in July, another 50 breakout sessions that are just, you know, individually put on by the organizers that will not have interpretation, but a wide array of parts of events. But the big events are the general sessions on Saturday and Sunday. If you want to watch them live, you got to get up in the middle of the night, folks. Sorry about that. It'll be 3 a.m. in Hawaii. You know, it was like, but Mark, the Honolulu folks, it's gonna be the middle of the night. And I said, yes, I know, but the numbers tell me we gotta do it at a different time for, you know, when it's eight o'clock in the morning in Chicago, it's six o'clock in the morning on the West Coast. It's, uh, what, it's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon in Europe. It's 6.30 in the evening in India. And it's 10 o'clock at night in Japan and Korea. So I know for the folks in Hawaii and the folks in New Zealand, and even the folks in Eastern Australia, if they're, if they're late, late night folks, they're still okay. 
it's the timing's not the best. But Marianne, don't get Marianne's laughing at me here. It's with all my <laughs> anyway. If you just can't get up at three o'clock, remember everything is recorded and you can still see it later at a reasonable hour. But I'm very excited, but I just, I really just this afternoon got so excited as Shannon Watson, our director of meetings and events at Rotary International was describing what you will see. You know, right now the, the riconvention.org website you know, there's two pages. There's the page with the schedule at a glance, and there's another page with the um, breakouts, the 15 breakout sessions. That's not too exciting right now. But once the convention starts, those pages will come alive. There will be all sorts of opportunities to really have an immersive, interactive participation in this first virtual convention in Rotary history. So, you know, I wanted to be in Honolulu and I'm still disappointed about not being in Honolulu and Gay and I are coming to Honolulu sometime and we're gonna have a big party and uh, Nalani's hosting or something like that anyway and um, the, um, what, where was I going? Oh, so the largest convention in Rotary history was in Osaka, Japan in 2004. We had just over 43,000 people, I'm sorry, just over 45,000 people registered, 45,381 to be exact. And I want to beat Osaka. I want this to be the largest convention in Rotary history. Now, you may say, but Mark, people, all they got to do is from their living room. Isn't that cheating? Yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> but it's still the numbers. The numbers don't lie. And of course, I've got to figure out, you know, the pr one problem is, is that when you register for the convention, when, you know, when John and Laura register for the convention, they're two people. But if they watch just on one screen, they're only one person. We're going to have to put that statistical factor in there, you know, that 1.75 or something, that every screen is 1.75 people. I don't, we'll let the statisticians come up with that. So anyway, as you can tell, I'm getting very excited about the virtual convention. I do want just, just to say a few things about Rotary in current times. I want to say that I have never been prouder to be a Rotarian than I am right now. The way that Rotarians have made the pivot from being an in-person organization to operating in a virtual world has just been so impressive. Some Rotary clubs didn't miss a beat. They met in person one week and the next week they were meeting online. Other Rotary clubs, it took a few weeks. There's a few Rotary clubs out there in the world that are still not meeting. And I'm very concerned about that. We need to continue to engage our members. And for those of you that are having virtual meetings such as this, I really want to congratulate you on that and thank you for what you are doing. But pay attention to that participant list that if you're in Zoom is on the right-hand side of the screen. And what is important about that participant list is not so much who's on the list, it's who is not on the list. Who from your club is not showing up week after week. Sure, they may miss one or two. I'm not worried about those folks. But who is, has not interacted, has not made the leap or the transition into the virtual platform? We need to be engaging our members. 
the greatest service that we can provide to the world right now is to engage our members. If we're meeting virtually, let's reach out to those members who are not showing up at the meetings. Maybe they need some assistance. We need to be checking up on them. Rotary, before it was a service organization, was a networking organization. That's what Paul Harris founded. And we need to reach out to those Rotarians, make sure they're doing okay, make sure that they understand that they are missed and that they are appreciated and see what we can do to bring them back into our, into our weekly meeting virtual uh, format. And if a club is not meeting virtually, if you have a neighboring club or if you're a district leader and see that there's a club or some clubs that are not meeting, then you need to reach out to those club officers and see what you can do to help. Because if a club is not meeting, are the Rotarians to our members of that club still going to be there whenever things go back to an in-person environment? If we want to be the premier service organization in the world, which we are, we must reach out to our members and make sure that they are engaged. So I could go on and on about things, but I would like to provide the opportunity, if that's appropriate, to answer any questions. Okay, great. Uh, Naomi, do you have any uh, questions uh, that came from the chat? Or if anybody wants to ask a question, simply un unmute yourself and let her rip. Uh, this is Jeff Forbath, uh, Wahiro Wahiro Rotary Club. What's really good about this virtual meeting is I, I'm a guest speaker for a club on the mainland, and I was just a speaker at a club on Maui yesterday. Um, and then I found out that Maui, if you watch Judge Judy, I think in June sometime, uh, the Maui Sunrise Club will be having Bert the bailiff on there. So there's all types of opportunity with the Zoom. Yes, Rotary Clubs are getting speakers from all over the world. I mean, here I am in speaking in on the big island of Hawaii. Tomorrow uh, morning, I start in um, Kol Kolkata, India, and then I move on to Nepal. And where was I yesterday? I've forgotten where I was yesterday. But anyway, um, I move around the world quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Mark, um, David Dinner in um, Hanalei has a question about the uh, convention program. Would you be able to share the program? Well, there's the two general sessions on Saturday and Sunday. The general sessions will be approximately 60 to 75 minutes in length. You know, we're not going to keep you all day in, in this uh, virtual convention. And then on Monday through Friday, we will have 15 featured breakout sessions. And these were 15 sessions that were originally scheduled for the convention in Honolulu. And those, there'll be one um in honolulu time there'll be one at 3 a.m one at 7 a.m and one at 1 p.m each day one hour each at each of those three times monday through friday two of those sessions will there'll be one session with president-elect holger kanak for district governors elect and club presidents elect. And there'll be another session with president nominee Shaker Mehta for governor's nominee and club president's nominee. Then on the following Saturday and Sunday, there will be the Rotaract and Youth Exchange Officers 
post-convention events. Typically, they're pre-convention events. But in this case, they're going to be post-convention events. And then throughout the month of July, there will be approximately 50 breakout sessions throughout the month that will not be, we won't have interpretation. The organizers will choose their own platform. They'll put on their, their own event. It won't be a common platform like we have for the 15 featured breakout sessions. So there's lots of opportunities. In addition, there will be a virtual house of friendship with approximately 50 exhibitors. And there will be a walking challenge involving an app. And there'll be more information coming. There will be, at the end of next week, you will see considerably more information about the convention in at riconvention.org. That is where you go to get all the information. It will be necessary to register. There is no cost to register, but this is going to be on a special streaming platform. This is not going to be just a Zoom meeting with 50,000 people on it. Um, and there are going to be, so you have to register in advance and there'll be detailed instructions available on the website. Registration, I expect it to open at the end of next week. I see that question, Roz Cooper. Hey, Randy Hart has a really important question to ask. The real Randy Hart? The real Randy Hart. Yeah, Mark, are, are you gonna miss your popcorn festival this year also? Well, the question is, will the popcorn festival happen? <laughs> yeah. um, I've heard, I heard someone uh, say that the governor of Illinois has said there will be no gatherings of more than 50 people in Illinois until there's a vaccine. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. And of course, this is a very rural area where there's, at, at least at this time, you know, in my home county, there's only two cases, but of course there's only 5,000 people who live there. Um, so the answer is, I don't know. And the other answer, the other question is, if they have it, will I be comfortable going there? I, you know, it just, there's a lot of uncertainty. I, I've been having bad luck with Popcorn Day lately. When I was president elect of Rotary International, I was able to just slide in the night before and be there for Popcorn Day. And we had the first washout of Popcorn Day in more than 50 years. Then last year when I was president, I had everything all worked out. No zone institutes that weekend. My schedule was open. I was heading to Popcorn Day and then they changed the date of Popcorn Day for the first time since 1959 because they could not find a, a carnival company to you know, have the kitty rides. And so they moved it one week earlier while I was in Brazil. So I missed Popcorn Day. It was a great, a great day. Now this year with the pandemic, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I've been, I've been the uh, master of ceremonies for Popcorn Day for 38 years. I'll get back there. And, and for, for everybody else, you know, the, the, the reason why I ask uh, Mark about the Popcorn Festival, uh, I, I also have, uh, originate from uh, downstate Illinois, and I'm probably one of the, uh, maybe the only uh, Rotarian in, in Hawaii that is uh, familiar with the, the Popcorn Festival in uh, Southern Illinois. So. And I think I was the only one at Pets that raised my hand when Mark asked if anybody knew where that uh, little town was at in uh, in Southern Illinois. So, uh, so Randy, remember, remind me what town you're from. I'm from, originally from Newton, uh, Illinois, just uh, on the other side of Effingham. So, right. And Casey, Casey has the other big uh, popcorn festival in Southern Illinois. Uh, the big competitor. <laughs> you know, I just, I just uh, was 
speaking with a client, a farmer client down in South Alabama, and his wife is from Newton. Oh. And, and so, anyway, that's beside the point. Small world. <laughs> uh, Benson has a question, and then uh, when after Benson. Uh, my question, uh, Mark, is um, do you think uh, Rotary International will ever come back to the to where we were at post COVID? And I mean, I think maybe we will eventually, but how, how long do you think it's going to take to do that? Well, you know, I'm just the president of Rotary International. <laughs> I'm not an infectious disease specialist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get questions about the disease and about the pandemic, like I'm, you know, Dr. Fauci or something. And uh, we, we, um, I don't think, I mean, many things in a few years time will be just like they were before. But I don't think Rotary as a whole will be the same ever again. Now, I don't mean that in a negative way at all, but I think you're going to see an application of virtual tools that this has forced us into. Necessity is the mother of invention. Where have we heard that before? And uh, never waste a good crisis. And so I think you're going to see Rotary clubs use virtual tools far more. Yes, in-person meetings will happen again, but I think many, many, many clubs will live stream their meetings. I think we will see far fewer in-person Rotary International Committee meetings. And I think while the Board of Directors may still meet in person, three times a year plus before and after the convention, I think they will have intervening meetings that are virtual. Um, I just called a special meeting of the board to address one issue and maybe a second issue for a week from Monday. And, you know, we can't do that all the time, but when most people are at home, it's pretty easy. <laughs> And uh, you know, I just think there'll be changes in technology. I mean, this pandemic is a watershed event. We've all had events in our lives, you know, that it's you know before I got married and after I got married, or before I we had children and after we had children, before the death of some family member and after the death of that family member. And I think in in Rotary we will have before the pandemic and after the pandemic. This is a watershed event. And of course, it's going to be that way for many, many businesses. I mean, the complication of just bringing people back to one rotary center is, is mon they're monumental. Uh, I, but so I think there will be, I'm confident, we will have some sort of medical solution that provides us with the confidence to go about life in a way that is very close to what we considered to be normal. But I am also confident that after this experience, we will do things differently in many different parts of our lives. And that's, you know, you, that opinion is worth what you just paid for it. All right. Thanks, Mark. That was, that was great. Appreciate that. This is Wynn. I received a uh, Wynn, I'm not hearing you, but I can see your question in the chat box. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Wynn. And I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm still coming for some ice cream sometime, Wynn. <laughs> yeah. um, Wynn's question is, one of our Rotarian Action Groups points out 
that there are currently 130 million people who are food insecure. It is estimated to double due to COVID-19 to over 250 million. What, if anything, will RI be doing to bring this into focus? You know, Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation exist to support Rotary clubs in their providing service. And just as we always have clubs who are performing service in many different areas, I think we will have clubs that want to work in the area of food insecurity. And we will continue to support those clubs, you know, under the uh, economic development area of focus and perhaps under the disease prevention and treatment area of focus. Um, are you saying, do I see having a new polio plus effort in that regard? I don't know that I do see that. One of our, one of our biggest challenges as past General Secretary Ed Puda knows, is trying to remain focused, not trying to be all things to all people. And that means that some causes Rotary does not take up. You know, if I could kind of go beyond your question, one cause that I do hope Rotary is going to move into in a bigger way is the environment and hopefully before the end of this Rotary year, the board will have a proposal from the trustees such that we can approve the environment as an additional area of focus. But we'll see what happens. We got 30 something more days. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. When I heard you that time. There you go, I got it fixed. Technology is a wonderful you. thing. Good to talk yeah. with you, Wynn. Hey, Junichi has a question about fundraising for Rotary Clubs. Junichi? Yes. Um, I just wrote down that uh, the old East, uh, East Hawaii Club do uh, uh, fundraising event at a major source for the funding, such as the Blue Fest or October Fest that involves alcohol, and then uh, many people gather at the place. So evidently, we are not able to hold such a big event. I think at least for a year. So uh, how, uh, what do you think about the future model of the fundraising of the Rotary Club? Well, I think the future model is going to include a lot of virtual events. And I'm not smart enough or innovative enough to tell you exactly what those events are going to be like. Um, but speaking of uh, a brew fest or an Oktoberfest, uh, General Secretary John Huco, as you know, has a history with Ukraine and is a member of a Rotary Club in Ukraine. And several weeks ago, in the earliest days of the pandemic, he participated online in a fundraising event, which was some sort of online beer fest. Now, Janichi, I'm not exactly sure how exciting an online beer fest is. It sounds a little dry to me, but apparently it worked out pretty well. And somehow you, you bid on virtual beers, which seems a little beside the point, but um, somebody in the end ended up with a case of beer of craft beer delivered to their doorstep. I don't exactly know how this project, how this fundraiser worked. I know that my wife's Rotary Club, you know, they were supposed to have their fundraising event two weeks ago, and they've now put it off till June the 12th, and it's going to be a virtual event. And there's going to be a live auction function as a part of this virtual event. Uh, I do think that, uh, you know, there will be the opportunity to do some things with smaller crowds in a socially distant way. And, you know, depending upon, you know, not in, not in the middle of Manhattan, but perhaps 
in some you know other communities with more people more space to move around i do think there are clubs that you know are very innovative and if you go to the rotary voices blog i think you will see a wide variety of suggestions of things that are working the innovation is not going to come from rotary international for these sorts of projects it's going to come from the clubs themselves okay thank you mark i appreciate it um, I'll read David Deleuze's question. It's about the update and insight of Rotary's uh, Polio Plus and COVID-19 initiatives and an update on monies raised to, to date. And then after that is uh, an update on the Disaster Relief Fund. Okay. I may not have all the latest figures, but I was just, just today in my email was a press release that had a quote from me. And so they wanted to make sure I would approve that quote so it could actually be a quote from me. But that press release was talking about how Rotary Clubs around the world and with the support of the Rotary Foundation has expended $18 million in support of COVID 19 relief projects and so that's kind of the latest number that i have as you know the trustees of the rotary foundation stepped up to the plate very early on allocated a total of three million dollars from the world fund for disaster response grants in addition at least another two million dollars was raised through allocations of ddf through cash contributions and through Rotarians diverting their convention refunds to the disaster response fund. And so we have seen tremendous support and global grants, the, the grant staff at the Rotary Foundation has been getting global grants in support of pandemic relief out the door so quickly, just in a matter of days. And in fact, I heard there was one grant that they got approved in a matter of hours. And as some of you know, who have been involved with global grants, that, that sort of speed is not typical of global grants. But here, the grant staff focused on what they could do to move things along very well. Polio eradication, of course, we are um, facing a difficult situation. We cannot undertake immunization activities at this time because of the pandemic, and that's going to set us back. But we need to continue our financial support so that we can continue the surveillance, and we are working hard to achieve that $50 million so that we will receive the full uh, matching grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We've got a ways to go. I'm not sure where we are now, but a couple weeks ago, we were $14 million short, and we are making appeals for allocations of DDF and for significant contributors to step up to the plate. But once conditions permit, we will be back. There's no reason in the world why we cannot eradicate polio. It's, it's delayed. There's no question this will push us back, but we will we will persevere and achieve our goal. Okay, that's the last question in the chat box. So um, Benson, do you want to do open mic or <laughs> how do you want to do this? <clears throat> yeah, if anybody has a, a question for uh, Mark, uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, ask away. Mark, this is Doug Adams. I actually did put my comment in the chat box, but um, it wasn't um, focused necessarily on um, relief funds and all. It was actually focused on, on you. And the amount of time that you've spent getting ready for the, um, uh, the position that you're in now as the international president, you're coming up with about a month to go uh, in the saddle in this particular position. 
And uh, rather than talking about legacy, uh, how do you, where are you? If you're a leader, you've been a leader, you're going to continue to be that. I'm interested in how leaders feel about what they're doing at any particular time. And so I'm interested in where you are at, at this point. Well, this has been one of the greatest opportunities that an individual could have. The opportunity for Gay and for me to connect with Rotarians around the world has just been outstanding. And I am not at all disappointed. Nothing has happened this year that would cause me to say, you know, I wish I just, I should have just skipped it and, you know, done something else. I don't feel that way at all. Um, you know, it was a difficult weekend in March. <clears throat> On Friday, March the 13th, I was meeting with the staff at Rotary International Headquarters, and we were talking about how the convention was going forward and dealing with some registration and cancellation issues and, you know, extending the time for the uh, lesser registration fee. And by Monday, I had a virtual meeting with staff and said, you know, I think we have to cancel this convention. Over that weekend, I just scoured the internet for articles and uh, information about what happened in the Spanish flu pandemic 102 years ago. And one thing that made a tremendous impact on, on me was the difference between Philadelphia and St. Louis. And I'm sure many of you have heard this, uh, particularly, you know, back in March, there hasn't been so much written about it later, but back in March, it was uh, a lot of, uh, of place, uh, a lot of coverage. And, you know, in Philadelphia, they proceeded with this huge parade, even though the pandemic was underway, Whereas in St. Louis, they closed the parks, they closed public facilities, they closed things that would bring people together. And the rate of infection and, well, the death rate was actually less than half in St. Louis as compared to Philadelphia. And I can remember over that weekend, you know, by, by Saturday evening, I was convinced we had to cancel. Gay wasn't convinced yet. Oh, Mark, why don't we wait just a little bit? Let's see. And we talked about it more and more. And by Sunday night, she was on the same page as I was. And I did have the opportunity. Uh, many of you may know, um, or at least know of, Dr. Bruce Aylward. Dr. Bruce Aylward with the World Health Organization led, up, led WHO's polio eradication efforts for many years and is a great friend of Rotary and appeared at many Rotary conventions and international assemblies. And he was the leader of the WHO group that went to Wuhan, China. And so I, I talked to Carol Pandak and I said, do you think you could get to where I could speak with Bruce Aylward? And she said, and, and over the weekend on Saturday, she says, I've got it worked out for you to call on Monday and uh, it'll be evening in Geneva. <clears throat> and so sure enough on Monday, I spoke with him and I just said, and I, I'd pretty much, I, I'd made up my mind at this point, but I wanted his confirmation. And I just said, is there any reasonable possibility that we can safely have an event with thousands of people in Honolulu, Hawaii? And he confirmed that he just didn't see how that could happen. And so, I don't know, I may have, I may have gone astray on your question, but, um, but, Hopefully, that's what leaders do. They take a look at the situation, they take the facts, and hopefully, I mean, now, 
there's no question but what we had to I mean you know everybody's gonna fly into Honolulu and be quarantined for 14 days and and uh, and uh, uh, you know but on June on March the 16th it wasn't quite as obvious and um, <coughs> You know, and, and we were actually supposed to travel through the month of, month of March. We were supposed to be traveling from March 1 to March 30th. And on March the 11th, we were in London. We were packing our suitcases to go the next day to Zurich. We went to a banquet that evening at the Pakistani embassy. And before we went to bed, we had airplane tickets to fly to Chicago instead of to Zurich. And on Thursday the 12th, we flew to Chicago, spent four days there where I was doing all this that I just described and came home. And now I have set the record for the president of Rotary International who has spent the most consecutive nights in his own bed. <laughs> and I'm, and I, I'm setting the record. I'm setting a new record every day because last night was night. Last night was Wednesday night. Last night was number 73. Tonight will be 74. I, you know, it's a new record every day. I'm, I'm sure you'd have to go back to at least World War II before there was a president who spent two and a half months in a row in his own home. I mean, you know, he, he surely went someplace and spent a night and broke that record. And so that was a very rambling answer. I appreciate it, President Mark. And, and now it wasn't all that rambling. I think it got to the, the um, guts of the, of the deal, which is you had to make a decision. You knew you had to make a decision and you cared about the people that were going to be there and situation when you're making that decision. And I didn't hear you say the word disappointment once in your answer. And I think that says something about leadership as well. Well, I am disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but who wouldn't be? Mm -hmm. Alan? Hi, Mark. Um, I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer. And um, I have a question for you, a kind of change of subject. Um, are you aware of the 7,300 plus Peace Corps volunteers who were abruptly evacuated from their country of service? And if so, can you tell us what um, RI and Peace Corps are doing together, if anything, to help them? Many are coming back home with great difficulty facing huge unemployment numbers and you know no prospect for employment themselves and of course very limited readjustment allowances provided by Peace Corps and with the partnership that we have with uh, Peace Corps um, I just thought maybe there was some joint effort taking place right now well, Alan, I am aware of the partnership between Rotary International and the Peace Corps, but I'll be frank with you. I know there's a partnership, but I don't know the details of it. And I have certainly, I have to be honest, I am not aware of any particular effort with respect to the issue you described. There may be something going on in that partnership, but I am, I am not personally aware of it. Well, just to let you know, um, here in Hawaii, we do have uh, an association of returned Peace Corps volunteers. Uh, some of them are um, also Rotarians. And we've tried in a very limited way to help them. But um, I'm just asking, you know. But I understand if you are not aware of it, totally understand because uh, you probably have many other things on your plate. You know, I'm, well, 
I'm not aware. That's the honest answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And Kimo is asking if there's any way that you can fast track um, having the convention back in Hawaii soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> if the board were to approve something like that, a proposal like that, it could happen. You know, I remember, you remember in Katrina, the convention was to be in New Orleans in 2007. And Katrina came through in September of 2005. And it became clear, you know, very soon thereafter that, well, or that the risk was at least too great that there would be no way to have the convention in 2007. And so what happened was they did a swap and the um, Salt Lake City had already been chosen for 2011. And so they swapped Kansas City, I'm um, not Kansas, they swapped New Orleans and Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City moved up to 2007 pulled off a convention in 18 months, and New Orleans took the spot that Salt Lake City had. Uh, I, can't, I would never make any promises, but given the circumstances, I think that there would be, um, it'd be worth making a proposal to the board to just, you know, bypass the usual. I mean, you know, there'd have to be some okay dates and hotels and, you know, something, but just perhaps granting it on a non-competitive basis based upon the, um, the proposal that John and Laura Steelquist put together 10 years ago. 10 years ago, something like that. Um, you know, the fact that you've been through all this might have some bearing. I, it would be worth discussing it with okay. um, leadership. Sonia is asking, um, what is your favorite fun home activity? Eating. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to say that it with Zoom meeting, well, now that I'm back home, I mean, I am practicing law some. And uh, things have kind of actually, I represent farmers. Uh, one of my key practice areas is farming and uh, in the federal farm program. And I'm just spending, uh, you know, only a couple hours a day on it because I'm doing all these rotary Zoom meetings. But, you know, right now I'm either practicing law, attending rotary Zoom meetings, eating meals or sleeping. I, I don't even have time to read a magazine. I must admit that I'm looking forward to July 1 and just, you know, picking up a newspaper and kind of sitting down and, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm really enjoying this, but knowing that July 1 is coming, um, I just want to sit down in a nice comfortable chair and read a magazine, read a book, read, read a newspaper, read a, a real newspaper. Thank you. Uh, there's one more question from David Dinner, uh, but maybe that one is for um, us to talk about in the district about um, Zoom training. So uh, David, maybe we should have a webinar on how to do Zoom training and having meetings online. Um, let, me so do, let me do say that, that there are, um, on the Rotary Learning Center, 
I'm not sure that it's Zoom training, but you know, using virtual platforms and and how to conduct events or meetings in this environment, there is information um, about that at the Rotary Learning Center. But to have the district take the leadership and to make sure clubs are implementing that, I do not want to discourage that at all. That's what, I mean, that gets back to my comments about member engagement back at the beginning. So I, I boy, it's already six o'clock here. Well, one o'clock for y'all. And I have to be, I have to get home because it's seven. I'm meeting, uh, this morning I met with half of the world rotary coordinators in the world. This evening at seven, I got to get out of this shirt, put the jacket and tie back on and meet with the other half of the rotary coordinators. Ah, yes, Mr. Hoban, I see Mahalo Mark there. And, oh, and Laura, okay, very good. So it's been great to be with you. Perhaps, I don't want to just break and run. If somebody's supposed to say something before I leave, I'll let you do that. Just, just to thank you, Mark, for uh, taking the time out of what we all know is a very, very, very busy uh, schedule to spend time uh, with us out here. And, uh, you know, it just, uh, it, it means uh, a lot to everybody out here in Hawaii that uh, you'd spend some time with us uh, to talk about things and give us an update uh, from uh, things at your level that, uh, that we just don't hear and see uh, that often. So, so thank you very much. And, Good luck with that popcorn festival. Well, watch out, because Gay and I are coming. I don't know when we're coming, but we're coming, <laughs> and we're going to have a big party. Aloha! <laughs> you got to figure out whose house it's going to be at. <laughs> Aloha! Aloha! Mahalo! Aloha. 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 Thanks, Aloha. Mark. Aloha. Aloha, Mark. Aloha, Mark. Thanks. Much mahalo. Just uh, in, in, in closing... Just wanted to say thank you for to to everybody that showed up today to uh, uh, listen to Mark and stuff. Uh, you know, I think it it represents District 5000 very very well in Hawaii. Uh, so thank you everybody and, and have a great week and stay safe. Thanks, Randy. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hawaii for letting us join you. Special special thanks to Benson and uh, Naomi. Yes. Oh, thank, thank you. you guys. Guys. Yeah. Good job, Randy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Benson. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Yeah. Good, we'll, good, you guys. We'll work on doing uh, virtual meetings and training. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. This is good fun. Oh, is it taking pictures? Aloha, Sandy. This is Romeo from West Stop. Hey, Romeo. Sandy's muted. <laughs> okay. Hi, Sandy. Roomie. <laughs>